Hello and welcome to our talk on layered weighted blended order independent transparency. This was a collaboration between Elma Eisemann from the Delft University of Technology, Martin Eisemann from the TU Braunschweig and myself Fabian Friedrichs from the TH Köln. The goal of this work was to accelerate rendering of semi-transparent surfaces in rasterization. When we use classical alpha blending for rendering transparent surfaces, then the order of submission of the primitives strongly affects the result. Here we have two differently colored quads, slightly transparent, and if we flip the order, we immediately get a totally different result. As long as we are able to sort the primitives, this is fine, but with today's graphics hardware and the implemented rasterization pipelines, this is not possible, because the triangles are processed in parallel and in a non-deterministic order. Then we have situations where triangles intersect, which is quite common when we, for example, render foliage or grass using billboards. In these cases, we have to use some method which is order independent. And these order independent transparency methods guarantee invariance to the order of submission. Current methods of OIT are either accurate and rather slow, like the depth peeling approach we used to render this first image over here. And there are other methods which are fast but quite proximate. And in this case, we can see that there's a lot of detail missing in the center of this building compared to our depth peeling reference. Our method is adjustable and lets us make this trade-off between quality and performance with a single parameter, which is our bin count. Our approach is based on the weighted blended order independent transparency operator introduced by McGuy and Pavoil in 2013. They use a weighted average of fragment colors to calculate the foreground and the weight is based on first the coverage or the alpha value of the fragments and a monotonically decreasing depth weight function. And this function basically assigns larger weights to fragments closer to the camera. Here we have a reference rendering using depth peeling of a stack of differently colored dragons. And if we compare this to the weighted blended result without using depth weights, we get a result like this. And in the center, the dragons are kind of arbitrarily blended together and we cannot really make out which surfaces are in front. In contrast to this, if we enable the depth weights, we get a result which is much more plausible. The method is a simple and efficient three-pass algorithm. As long as the color distribution is close to uniform and we have a kind of even depth distribution, like in this case, we get really nice results. This is a smoke fountain, which consists of lots of billboards and they are all similarly colored. And therefore we get a result which is close to ground truth and the error is not too high. But as we increase the color variance and particularly the coverage, then we get artifacts. Here we have a stack of fully opaque squares and we really shouldn't be able to see anything behind this first red square in the front. We present a simple yet efficient algorithm for order independent transparency. The basic idea is that we split the view frustum into a number of n depth bins. Then we apply the weighted blended operator to each of these bins separately and then blend the per-bin results together using the classical alpha blending method. If we let the number of bins approach infinity, then there's only a single fragment left in the limit in each bin, and therefore we get the correct result. Unfortunately, in practice, we only can use a finite number of bins, and if we implement this naively, we get these discontinuity artifacts. To mitigate these, we distribute the contributions of each fragment across multiple bins based on a smooth weighting function. In addition to that, we adapt the bins to the depth of the first layer of transparent geometry, similar to what was already done in deep opacity maps. This way, all artifacts in the first layer are removed because there are no intersections of primitives with bin boundaries. Artifacts caused by intersections in subsequent layers tend to be masked by edges in the first layer. If we apply this to an naive implementation, the artifacts from before are successfully removed. For comparison, we rendered the famous power plant model using three methods. First with depth peeling as a reference, then with our technique using 32 bins, and then with a weighted blended operator. In this highly complex part of the model, we can see that our method retains a lot more detail compared to the weighted blended operator, while also retaining real-time frame rates on commodity hardware. Thank you for listening, and more details can be found in the paper.